hello and welcome um, to our second in a series of our virtual learning, um, this year focusing on the 2015 spring term. And then specifically uh, on courses that engage students in their world around them. And today we have Andrea LePage, who is an Associate Professor of Art, to talk to us about your course on Chicano and, Ch and Chicana uh, art and muralism. Great. So, can you th welcome, thank you for being here. Can you tell us first a little bit about what drew you to the topic and about the course and kind of the goals of what you have this spring? Sure, thank you so much for having me oh, here, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah, great. Um, the class is called U.S. Latino and Chicano Art and Muralism okay. from the street to the Stanier Gallery. So <laughs> the double component, two components, sure. one is the street and that mm -hmm. covers muralism mostly right. in LA, okay. and the other is, um, is the Stanier Gallery, which is the art exhibition space right. of the university in the art gallery, right. um, where we, um, we have now installed an, uh, an exhibition series by Vincent Valdez. Good, and great, and he was here. He was here. Last week? He right. was, he was here last yeah. week, worked with the students for a couple of days, and sure. will be back in a week and a half oh, with his band to perform um, Right. a multimedia performance right. so we're really excited about that as good, well good and how did you first get in, interested in this topic to bring to, to Washington and Lee um, well I think as the as it, it tends to go at Washington and Lee about five spring terms ago uh -huh. I taught a class on Mexican muralism okay. and this interest has actually come out of other teaching interests um, right. which led to my research so mm -hmm. there's this very nice compatibility yeah. between my teaching and research right. and that class was on um, the three great Mexican muralists, okay. um, David Alfaro Siqueiros, okay. Diego Rivera, and um, Jose Clemente Orozco. Uh -huh. And um, at that time, I became interested in the manual that okay. Siqueiros produced. Uh -huh. It was called um, How to Paint a Mural. Mm -hmm. And it was meant to be, it, was, it dates to 1951. It was meant to be an ideological and practical manual to um, basically export a, a particular kind of muralism right. throughout the world. So okay. the idea was to promote social change sure. through, through imagery. Sure. Um, right. And that research and that class kind of led me to the Great Wall of Los Angeles, right. which yeah. is now the, the main topic of this course. Right. Um, that's where you started, right, in the begin very beginning of the that, courses with that's, that. Piece. That's right. Well, so, sure. And so actually that's where we start and where we end. It's, okay. a, it's a full month-long exploration of nice. a single artwork. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a half mile long mural in Los Angeles. It's created by um, an artist in Los Angeles called Judy Baca uh -huh. and her organization, which is SPARC, so the Social and Public Art Resource Center. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And together she worked with dozens of artists, 400 youth mural makers, and they produced uh -huh. a, a half mile long mural that documents the history of California. And what was the time frame? When did they do that, that work? So the, the work, the, the planning process begins a little earlier, obviously, mm -hmm. but in, during five summers between 1976 and 1983, um, taking a couple of summers off during that time, they produced this monumental artwork. And, and plans are still underway to actually extend it the next half mile. So right now, as we're sitting here, Right. They are they're planning the next right. the next half. And to bring that to your students, how do you? I mean, you're not going to the the location, right? So right. how do the students actually? How are they able to view the different parts of this and study that history? Right. So we aren't able to go. So that is that's on my my wish list sure. at some point. Yeah. And and I am actually taking one student to mm -hmm. Los Angeles to see the oh, mural excellent. over the summer as part Great. of her research. But uh, we, we look at it in digital reproduction, okay. and uh, I'm developing, along with Jeff Knudsen and ITS here at WNL, a digital annotation technology, Excellent. which allows students to actually map out areas on the artwork mm -hmm. and then co um, correlate information like testimonials sure. or newspaper articles or text or any, any mm -hmm. of their ideas with particular spots on that mural. And so does each, do each of the students take a, a piece of it when you're doing that? I mean, they how do, do. they... Do they, do they choose sort of an area of the history or a social issue that they work on? Well, because everything is so, goes so very quickly right. in the spring term <laughs> sure. here, right. um, they, I get them to fill out a pretty extensive questionnaire on the first day of class, uh -huh. asking them everything I can possibly ask about their interests right. in civil rights, um, mm -hmm. various uh, minority cultural groups. That's the focus sure. of this particular artwork. Um, time periods, mm -hmm. the, the, the depression, the, the Great Wall documents from prehistory until about 1959. Yeah. So it's an extensive history of California, sure. which sure. also relates to U.S. history mm -hmm. um, more generally. Mm -hmm. So I get them to fill out a questionnaire and then by the second day, I'd say they have been assigned 
uh, a couple, they give, they're given a couple of choices sure. of, of pieces and mm -hmm. segments that they can choose from and, and then they get to work. Yeah. So they've just started their presentations. We're into week two now. Okay. And they right. just they they get complete control of that segment of the That's of really the mural. Exciting. Now, are the students all art? I mean, they, are they senior art majors, or are they from all different backgrounds? What's the they, makeup of the class? They are not all art majors. There are some, which mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah. We have some studio majors. We have some art history majors, journalism, a couple of um, a couple of first years who are not declared. Sure. Um, students who hope to pursue medical careers. Uh -huh. okay. So lots and lots of yeah. different uh, Latin American Caribbean studies sure, students, of so lots of history students. Great. It's a nice, great mix. Yeah. And, the, and you mentioned the student that's going with you this summer. Is that a mm -hmm. student who's been either taking the class or is, is you that, know, she, is she not? She is not taking the class. <laughs> okay. She okay. has been working on this um, project, but is studying abroad this okay. term and over the winter term. Mm -hmm. So she will come back and we will immediately go to Los Angeles and to mm -hmm. Mexico City actually for a different Great. part of the, the research. Excellent. And um, in the term, you mentioned that you had the visiting artist who will be back mm -hmm. um, with his band. So can you tell that's me a little right. bit more about what that's going to be like? Sure. So his, um, so Vincent Valdez is the artist. Mm -hmm. He's produced a series called The Strangest Fruit. Okay. And this is... And this he's is, in San Antonio? He's in San Antonio, San Antonio Texas. Mm -hmm. His artwork deals with... Um, it. it it draws together history and contemporary times, mm -hmm. which is precisely what the Great Wall does as well. Right. And in his artwork, he, he's considered historical lynching of Latinos, mm -hmm. which is a, a little known, not completely yeah. unknown, but little known historical um, uh, uh, time period mm -hmm. in which many, many Latinos were lynched in the mm -hmm. American Southwest and mm -hmm. California predominantly. Mm -hmm. So his work um, ju juxtaposes that history, mm -hmm. sort of maps that onto contemporary Latino men right. who mm -hmm. are depicted as if hanging from, from an, a rope, although the rope is completely erased. Wow. And they're, they're on a white background. It is yeah. powerful. Mm -hmm. And the, the backgrounds are about to, they almost feel as if they will erase those bodies. Mm -hmm. So the idea, I think, that he, he brings up is the notion of whitewashing history, mm -hmm. forgetting things over mm -hmm. time, um, and and the dangers of that, sure. and that we repeat them. Right. So his next link in that is then to think about how there's present day discrimination that mm -hmm. is no longer in the form of lynching and no longer in the form of a noose, but instead um, takes the form of things that he has mentioned are racial profiling, right. stop and frisk programs, sure. mass incarceration. Right. And you, and you mentioned that the students had an opportunity to interact with him. So they, they each had a topic of his own art that then they were able to interview him. And, they did. Yeah, they, right. they were assigned, they each were assigned a, a painting in mm -hmm. the series. So there, um, there are a number of paintings. Students were paired together uh -huh. and um, spent a day with Vincent Valdez in listening to him. Mm -hmm. um, he basically, and he did an amazing job with them. He let them lead the discussion on day two yeah. of the class, wow, which was that's really amazing. exciting. That is amazing. And two hours in the gallery, sitting in the space with the artworks, and mm -hmm. the students asked the questions, and he answered sure. them. That's, that's fantastic. And can you see that? I mean, it's just week two, but can you see how the, the right. students are progressing in terms of their ability to, you know, look at this artwork, but also then to, to look at sort of modern day issues? I mean, that sounds like right. A, yeah, great way the classes are helping them engage and, and uh, you know the amazing thing about the spring term is is you can see that progress it's yeah. so it's it is magnified right. watching being in the classroom with the students for several sure. hours every single day yeah the, the third day of the class is the day that they interviewed Valdez okay and they had to stand on camera yeah and interview him sure. and then later transcribe that interview right. mm -hmm. so first they had to come up with at day three, sure. what questions, what relevant questions should one ask? And then they had to edit out the interview. Wow, um, to, that's, yeah, to yeah. understand sure. what you know, what were, what parts of that interview would get the reader in this sure. case um, to to the best possible understanding of that artwork. So they, I mean, this uh, that having that artwork on view sure. has encouraged them to think about. Um, our world today, mm -hmm. right? The Great Wall was yeah. produced in the 70s and 80s, right. but what are the segments of the Great Wall that still have relevance today in our own time? And it's, it's sadly, because yeah. it's a work that deals with discrimination, mm -hmm. um, most of it, much of it mm -hmm. has contemporary Which relevance. Yeah. Right. So they get to bring in, um, you know, uh, they get to discuss things like the Michael Brown case. Sure. 
um, they get to um, really think about how um, many, many minority groups in this country historically mm -hmm. or in our present day time have suffered similar types of discrimination and marginalization and think about what it means to unite those groups mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe think about how there is this, this larger and stronger voice that comes out of uniting those minority, right, right. Um, multiple minority voices. Sure. And how would the students, I noticed that you're going to be participating in the Spring Term Festival, mm -hmm. how do you see the students sort of bringing a sort of a culmination of what they've learned through both this, you know, with, with Valdez's work, but also some of the other areas throughout history of muralism? Well, there, so two, there are a couple of things that we're doing that I hope to present at the spring term fair. Um, one is that they're producing a WNL mural. They are. That was going to be another so, question I had about whether or not right. they were going to be doing some muralism of their own. So it won't be yeah. a, a true. It won't truly be sure. a mural. They won't paint. But what mm -hmm. we are doing, and we're we're doing it on the blog. We're doing it in sure. class. We're we're thinking about this all sure. the time. Are what are those aspects of WNL's culture and history that need to be represented. Sure, excellent. And, yeah. you know, do you include that part of the Great Wall narrative is mm -hmm. inspirational, uh -huh. but also mm -hmm. recognizing um, sure. aspects of the past that, right. that are not perhaps as, um, that, that, that represent moments of adversity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the students are, are thinking a lot about what, sure. how do we represent ourselves as a community? Right. Right. How do we, I've had lots of students say, I've never given very much thought to who I am yeah, as an individual yeah. and, and really thinking about individual identity and how it relates to a larger community mm -hmm. at WNL in Virginia, right? in the United States, sure. in the world. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So they won't necessarily be producing a, a, the visual images, but more the sort of topics and, and, right. and issues that would be addressed if they were doing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, that one day, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe in the next spring term sure. version of yeah. this class. When, when we first conceived of this, we had imagined a, right. a mural painting. Uh -huh. But four weeks is an awfully yeah, short time is, to, to do everything that we're doing and, yeah. then, and then paint. But right now sure. they're cutting and, and pasting imagery, sure. things like that, yeah. which is how the initial Great Wall Project actually starts out. When right. That's how you start to um, cultivate ideas for mm -hmm. imagery. Excellent. Thank you. Is there anything else that you want to add about for you what this experience has been like? so far and being able to do this course and how different it might be than the other kind of courses that you teach? It, well, sure. It's, um, you know, I always teach the Great Wall. I think it's an incredibly important mm -hmm. artwork in all of my classes. So in my survey classes, mm -hmm. I give it a full class period, which mm -hmm. is about 50 minutes. So this is even in your introductory? Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, 50 minutes is actually a lot when you think that maybe you're covering all of, you know, modern U.S. Latino art. Right. but. You can imagine the superficial quality sure. in, or treatment that you mm -hmm. have of an artwork in, right. in that short of a time. This is amazing to have the luxury of just having to worry about getting through one artwork in an mm -hmm. entire term right. and, and handing over control, I think, of the classroom to the students yeah. and, and, and watching how, um, how easy it is for them to step into those positions as teachers yeah. and collective production. And really, I think what's hitting home for me and hopefully for them is the idea that you know together we all have a certain amount of knowledge and together the 25 of us or so can bring so much more yeah. to this it's experience like, yeah, the collective, the collective the, yeah, production exactly. mm -hmm. right. Well, Andrew, yeah. thank you so much. Oh, really thank you so much. It, it was great to me. have you with us thank today you. and thank you for joining us and we'll have uh, more segments on this to come. Great. Thank you.